Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Welcome, everybody. This is Victor in the Psalter. As you can see, it's Saturday Night Vigil. I'm wearing my white alb and my crucifix. It's a personal tradition of mine that I practice on Saturday nights, starting at Saturday Vigil, um, or Sunday Vigil Mass. Saturday Vigil Mass, I'm sorry, um, as a way for me to really focus in on the mystery of the death and resurrection of Christ. In fact, if I were single and if I were um, able to start a religious community, I had a, uh, I think I would probably ask my monks to spend most of Saturday, all, all of Saturday night in silent contemplation as a way to prepare for Sunday. But then again, that's just my own personal um, eccentricity, my own little quirk. Um, but anyway, thank you for joining me again, and this is going to be the last installment on my of my series on the rule of St. Benedict. As stated earlier, I'm not interested in going into a chapter-by-chapter -chapter analysis of the rule of St. Benedict. There are plenty of people on YouTube or on, online who can do that much better than, than I. I just wanted to share some personal insight and personal reflections on how the rule of St. Benedict has affected my life and how I think the rule of St. Benedict can affect your daily life as a person living in the world. The rule of St. Benedict, although it was written for monks living in a community, um, the lessons to be learned in the rule of St. Benedict are universal and highly applicable in the day-to-day -day, um, working world. Uh, today I'm going to focus on two particular teachings from the Rule of St. Benedict as a way to wrap up what I believe to be the, um, the core teachings of the Rule of St. Benedict. I think the best place to start would be humility. Um, I spoke a little bit about humility I think in the previous video, but um, one thing about humility that a lot of people don't really think about at least I didn't until I, I, I read the Rule of St. Benedict, is that humility is not to be seen as some kind of um, self-hatred or low self-esteem, but humility, what it does is it helps clear away all of the cobwebs, all of the false identities that we bear within us so that we can become our true selves. Um, when we spend less time worrying about whether or not we have the latest hairdo or whether or not we're getting so many likes on YouTube or on Facebook or when we focus more on just our daily duties and serving other people and being kind and gentle with others people will naturally gravitate towards us because that's people naturally gravitate to God people will naturally gra gravitate to um, the Creator it's because God is who we come from um, even the most stubborn, uh, secularized person um, will readily, you know, drive his car up to um, some coast or some beautiful view of a beautiful landscape um, to go watch the sunset uh, because there's something in us that is naturally driven towards the eternal towards the towards beauty um, so even if you believe or, or don't believe in, in the gospel um, there's no denying that we as human creatures are by divine decree drawn towards God drawn towards the infinite and uh, the best way to reap the benefits of that is by humbly accepting that we are just creatures okay when we accept that we are only creatures and that there's nothing special about us other than the fact that we come from God. Um, when we give God all the attributes, all the laud and honor for anything the good, anything good that's within us, when we attribute all, all the good in us to God and all the bad and all the sin to our corrupt nature, 
then we begin to get a sober sense of reality. Um, and that leads us into the second part of this video where St. Benedict says in, very, in no uncertain terms that the, the monk or the Christian should always have death before his or her eyes. We should always be aware of the moment when we die. We should always be prepared to die, whether it's by accident or by murder or what have you. Um, we don't know how we will die, but we do know that we will die one day. And so it's extremely important that you have that sobering reality before your eyes at all times, whether you're at a birthday party or you're out at dinner with your friends you should realize that one day you will become food for maggots. Unless, of course, you're incorruptible, but that's a rare exception. It's not to be morbid, but it's to realize that if we have eternal life, if we are part of the elect that will rise from the dead and, and live with Christ in the, in the kingdom of heaven in our glorified bodies, that is only because of the grace of the Holy Spirit not because of any kind of technique that we practiced or anything like that. It's not something that we do. It's something we allow God to do within us by choosing to let Him into our lives. So as St. Louis de Montfort once said, you should prepare your coffin mentally. Prepare your coffin every day mentally. And ever since I started doing that, rather than becoming depressed, it's more like I'm a cancer patient. You know, in a sense, we're all like cancer patients. Our days are numbered. You know, the only difference between us and between we and the uh, cancer patients is that um, their death is guaranteed to come much sooner than expected. But um, we're not that much different. And sin, sin and corruption of the body is, in a sense, cancer. Sin is a cancer of the soul and the body. That's why St. Paul says that the wages of sin is death. So I think that the first step to humility would be realizing that you are, you are nothing but biodegradable matter. I am nothing but biodegradable matter. But I am enlivened and animated by the spirit that God gives me, the life that God breathes into me. So I am I'm, a, I'm an animated body, but I have no control over how long my body stays animated because at death, that's when my soul separates from my body and goes back to God or wherever it is that God determines it goes. That's pretty sobering. And no amount of money, no amount of education, no amount of prestige can ever overcome that. It's just the way things are. You know, like a, a snake is not able to hear. Can't change it. It's just the way things are. A snake cannot hear. Doesn't have ears. A, a, a human being can't flap wings and fly. He has no wings. A human being cannot kiss his own elbow. I can't kiss my own elbow. It's just the way things are. Um, so death is just a natural result of sin. And thanks be to the redemption that's offered to us in Jesus Christ. We're able to overcome death, but only by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's a really great reality for us to face as human beings. And the rule of St. Benedict teaches that by, by having death before you at all times, you will react accordingly to life's daily surprises. Um, you know, if you if you can't make that house payment or if you lose that job, it's not the same as losing your soul to the devil or it's not as bad as, as dying in a state of mortal sin. You can always get another job. You can always just foreclose and just let the house go. You're supposed to be detached, detached from created things. You only use created things for the glory of God, says uh, St. Benedict. So having death before you and then always speaking with a minimal amount of words. 
fewness of words is a great sign of wisdom. Um, I've met monks who were in monasteries for decades, and one thing that always stood out to me about older monks is these are people with tremendous knowledge of the Bible, tremendous knowledge of sp spiritual matters. You know, they, they could just go on and on about wisdom, but they don't say anything because they have reached a point, a level of spirituality, where they realize that it's the Holy Spirit that does everything and they are only the pens in the hand of the Holy Spirit. They are, the, they are only the implements. It's the same thing with older priests. If you look at older priests, um, people who have a lot of experience in ministry, they don't say much. And when they do say something, it's always effective because the Holy Spirit's there speaking through them. Um, that's one thing I noticed about older priests, that they... I used to wonder, why aren't they saying anything? They're just so boring. But I was just too immature to realize that um, they were trying to show me that the one I should be listening to is not, not they, but them, but the, um, the Holy Spirit. There was one time I went to confession to an older priest, and I remember the penance he gave me was to be open to the Holy Spirit. I'm so used to priests saying things like, okay, pray ten Hail Marys, or um, do a charitable act, or something like that, to, um, to make satisfaction for my sins after confessing. But this particular priest just said, be open to the Holy Spirit. This was a couple of years ago. And at the time I thought, well, what, what good is that going to do? You know, it's not really doing anything. But then I realized that's the most active, most effective thing I can possibly do is to you know, humble myself and to allow the Holy Spirit to really invite the Holy Spirit to really act in my life. And once I started doing that, tremendous things started happening. I like that word, tremendous. Wonderful things started happening. I became much more fruitful in my labor, much more um, easygoing with other people because it was no longer about me. It's no longer about me. It's no longer about getting that job promotion. It's just about serving. Um, I work in elementary education and um, using the rule of St. Benedict has helped me a lot in how I approach my work, how I approach my students, how I approach my coworkers. Um, so I'm always the kind of person who will just get out of the way and let someone else um, get the, the spotlight if possible um, because having too much um, honor can easily become um, intoxicating and a source of idolatry and by not saying much you know not, not, not saying much when you're in a party or you're with friends you don't say much you just listen you become a good listener and everybody enjoys a good listener Let's admit it, we, we, we all like having a good listener. Um, someone who just doesn't critique you or judge you, just someone who listens and somehow their presence always tends to heal you, whatever it is that, that was ailing you. So, economy of words, you know. We hear a lot about minimal, uh, this whole minimalist movement, people who live on just the bare minimum and are happy because of it. Well. It looks like it's some great new revolutionary thing, but St. Benedict has been teaching minimalism for the past, you know, couple centuries. Um, this is nothing really new. It's, it's, it's been in the church for ages. Um, living with the bare minimum is, is a Christian concept. Um, it's, it's something going back to the ancient world. It's, it's not anything all that original. It just looks... It looks it looks it looks very new and exciting because it's packaged in this secular language, but it's it's a Christian concept of, of, of spiritual poverty. You're not attached to the things of this world, so you can enjoy other people. You can enjoy the things that really matter. Okay, so economy of words, meditating on death frequently, and and the third one is to. Um, approach your work with such humility that you're always looking at the ground. Monks, good monks, tend to look at the ground a lot. And it's not because they're depressed, but because they always see themselves as um, beho um, beholden uh, to God. 
that they, they owe God everything, and they are, they're always prepared for the last judgment. A good Christian is always prepared for the final judgment. So he approaches life as if it's the last day of his, as if it's the last day of his or her life. That's that's the beauty of being a Christian. Every day could be your last day. Live for the live for today. And so I'd like to close this rather lengthy meditation on the rule of Saint Benedict by saying that um, you don't have to be a monk to enjoy the fruits of the spiritual life. One thing that the rule of Saint Benedict teaches is that every day every day can be a spiritual retreat and especially when you pray the liturgy of the hours when you're constantly coming into contact with the Word of God through devoted prayer you begin to realize that God is always there that his angels are always there that we live in communion with the supernatural at every moment of our lives and so every day is a chance to become holier every day is a chance to become a temple of the Holy Spirit and even though we may fall or sin if only we can pick ourselves up again and keep on keep on that journey keep on keeping on as they say in the south um, it's a beautiful lifestyle and I'm very very I'm very pleased and satisfied and fulfilled by living a life of spirituality in the world based on the rule of St. Benedict, based on the scriptures. Um, really, what else is there? You know, Everything else is passing, but the word of God remains forever. So, St. Benedict, patron of the West, patron of the Western monastic tradition, we thank you for the gift of the rule of St. Benedict. We thank you for your commitment to the gospel of Christ. We thank you for the gift of a rich prayer prayer life. And we, we beg you for your intercession. We beg you to please pray for us, our families, that we can all live in harmony with one another as a giant monastic community of Christians living in the world, ready to be submissive to the Holy Spirit's promptings so we can be lights, lights for the world, salt, salt for the world. Thank you, St. Benedict. Please pray for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. May, mighty, may Almighty God bless you and keep you. Please keep me in your prayers, and I'll always be keeping you in mind.